The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 14th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but way more important than that. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Just rifle off an email. Probably shouldn't say rifle off these days, but rifle off an email. Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, indices all in the red, mean in, in the red. Uh, the Dow is off 725 points, the S&P 81, the NASDAQ 100, 236. That's 3 percent to the downside. Spot volatility index is up 29 percent. That's up 5 bucks. 22.58 is the print there. You know, the fire drill. And we are going to go ahead and put some water on this fire out here. Well, we're going to take a look at what the markets are really communicating to you and I. You've got gold up 19 buckaroonies out there. Trade out at 1532 bonds up another one and nearly two points out here uh, if we wait uh, long enough it probably will be get up to the 165 level leading the charge to the upside that's not an etf hard to find in fact i don't have one vanguard extended duration treasury bills it looks like out there edv is a ticker symbol to the downside the individual stock wise amazon 65 bucks booking holdings 48 google off 33 costar group down 29 so some big movers and really shakers to the downside but let's begin by taking a look at the markets here and then we'll go to the questions that have come in uh and by taking a look at the markets let's first always like to step back and take a look at well where are we what are we doing welcome to the world of the consolidation Here's our monthly charts for the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000. We are in a consolidation. And it's going to be like this. Well, I don't know when it's going. the consolidation will end. Probably doesn't end. Well, we know the date time frames for us to look at. We know that middle of October is one possibility. We know that the end of January is another possibility. Then you've got the end of June. Uh, and uh, now I'm obviously I'm into uh, 2020 out here. And then you've got the October time frame. So those would be the time periods where you would likely see a bottom of the consolidation. It's not likely to be August the 14th out here. Um, so we're in a consolidation. We know that. What do we know about today's trading action out here? Well, first, if we take a look at our TAS daily profiles, what we know that's going on right now and what we want to pay attention to for some type of signal, I would say it would be the Russell 2000. So the Russell 2000 is right now testing the bottom of its daily profile. Now, the structure of this profile is bearish. Let's step back for a moment. What do you mean bearish out here? Let me do this. Let me just simply turn off price because we're just simply going to look at the most recent box out here. The top of the box we're taking a look at is up at the 1603.50, the center 1557, the bottom 1465. 
So sellers should have, which they do right now, have had the power to push price down to test the bottom of that profile. We turn the price on out here, and we can see that we're trading right at the bottom of the box. So with regard to the Russell 2000, this is where buyers are lined up. Whether or not they're going to be able to overcome the sellers, I don't know that. But if you were wondering, like if it's now the time that you would step on the gas and take a short position in the Russell 2000, the answer, my friend, is absolutely positively not. Of course, you wouldn't do it at a potential support area, which is 1466 is what we'll call it. We're at 1465.90 out there. So price is at support. We don't have price at support in the NQ. That's way further down. That's down at the 7305 level out here. And with regard to daily profiles, the new profiles that form for the ES and the YM, they're above price. So we can't really look to those. That was a bearish um, when those profiles form. When you have when you have when you have profiles form above price, it's a bearish indication. Bullish when profiles form below price. So all we know right now is, a, is the Russell 2000 is testing a key level of support out there. Okay, what else do we know? Well, let's step back and just simply take a look at uh, volume out here. Typically, I leave this for the volume master, and that would be Obi-Wan Kenobi. But we need to take a look at it at 112 in the afternoon. Obviously, our polar bear, he's going to look at it. He'll look at it through the lens of the power law vector indicator and what's going on with regard to the indices. But if we take a look at the ETF structure out here, and we begin with the uh, spot, Here's what we know. We know that price is trading inside its most recent swing point. That swing point is from August the 5th. That swing point had 179 million shares out there. We're rounding. You're at 60 million shares. We are more than 9, 30, 10, 30, 11, 30, 12, 30, 1, 30, 4, 30. We're, we're four, six and a half, so to speak. You know, we're more than halfway into the trading session. And this is uh, light volume. Uh, mega light volume. Now, when you are inside a swing point, you never know if price is going to go test. And if it's with volume, you say you're going to go test the bottom, which is 281.72. If it's light volume, you can, but you're really not sure whether it will or it won't. But here's what we know. Don't have the type of selling that we saw on August the 5th out there. That says prepare for a possible bounce. So you've got the Russell 2000 equity futures contract at support. The SPY is pulling back with much lighter volume. If we go take a look at the QQQ series ETF, remember the NQ, we don't have a profile level. Where pro we know what the profile level is. It's quite a bit further to the downside. But here's what we also know about the Qs. The top of the swing point that they're testing is 183.51. It's still the same date out here. It's August the 5th. The volume there was 75 million. You're at 27 million right now. You want to talk about giganto light volume out here. So those of you that are short, here's what Stevie's suggestion is, at least just looking at these few things out here. We are in a consolidating market. We are in a trader's market and tighten up those stops out there. The sphincter muscle is eventually going to get smaller and smaller out here. So and if you see today, the Qs close above 183.51 on less than 75 million shares, which right now that looks like a no-brainer. Anything can happen, but it looks like a no-brainer right now. Talk about a rejection of a swing point, as it did just a couple of days ago when we saw yesterday's rally out there. Now, let's finish this off. Let's go take a look at the IWM. Let's see what it is doing on a daily basis. It's trading into really two different swing points. It's August 5th swing point, which had volume there of 39 million. You've done 16 today, light volume, but you're below that. So price could be targeting. Now, if price closes above 146.21 today, 146.21, that would be a rejection of that swing point. And your light volume coming into the swing point all the way back from May 31st out there. We get back from this break. We'll continue looking at the markets. Answer your questions. This is Steve Roach with TMP. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's off 709, S&P down 78. Let's go out to Philadelphia and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Steve, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call, sir. Sure, my pleasure. Hey, uh, Steve, uh, thank you for answering a question on your show yesterday. I think I posed it uh, in text form regarding the rally yesterday and uh, your hope to be soon, Steve, patented Apogee Perigee Pivot Trading Tool. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta uh, love that, don't and, you? And while no one I know of, certainly myself mostly, uh, had any idea that uh, sellers would come out of the woodwork as they have thus far today, what is uh, just incredibly clear, and I wish to repeat this for your listening audience, uh, rallies that uh, run up to your perigee apogee pivots and stop are incredibly low-risk trade entries. No doubt. And, of course, I took it yesterday, and it's working out nicely. So I just uh, I encourage everybody to buy your work and get a hold of that pivot tool because um, it doesn't well, thanks, come John. into play every day, certainly, nor every week. However, right, right. it is a tool that's a must in anybody's uh, arsenal. Well, thanks. Uh, I appreciate that. So, yeah, so thank you for r reviewing in real time what Price was doing relative to those numbers yesterday. Yes. Now that we've started to fall off, I ask you the following. Um, with the pace of decline here today, why, uh, let's get, I ask you this, is there any reason that you see in your work 
that says we shouldn't automat that sh excuse me that we should not quickly fall all the way down to the 2740 S&P area, which would mark an AB equals CD projection. Any reasons in your work why you don't think that will occur, please? Sure. So there would be there would be a couple of those things. So today's market, one of the things that it's done, and let's take a look at the S&P 5, but let's take a look at, I'm sorry, let's take a look at the Dow. Because the Dow here, I'm going to put up the daily chart for the Dow. And uh, what we can see here, it's, it's, there's a black line that's been drawn on the Dow chart, my Dow chart, my daily Dow chart out here, uh, from the August 5th low to the low of today slightly lower low. And what this is potentially creating is a roads momentum indicator bottom signal. Now, the last time that we had, uh, so, as, so as good as perigee and apogee are, so too is this tool and this indicator. If we take a look at the last bottom, John, <clears throat> that formed out here on June 3rd, is it was with that same pattern. Now, it requires a bullish reversal candle. That's not going to happen today, but it could happen over the course of the next couple of days out here. So the Dow has that pattern that is in play. That that does not mean that this pattern will identify a bottom. There's, there's five very specific rules that must be followed for this. But the mere fact that it is present makes us say, hmm, something to think about. Now, the ultimate support level, if this doesn't identify a bottom, is 24,960,282. That's where price broke out. But this is the Dow. And you're asking, is there any is there anything I'm looking at in my work to suggest that the market may not head down into you gave a figure of about 2740 or so, which would be a monthly horizontal trading range as well. Also, the New York Stock Exchange, John. So when I pull the New York Stock Exchange chart out, we'll see that it, too, is generating a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. Now, the New York Stock Exchange topped with a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. It didn't happen until this bear sash candle formed. It looks like around the 27th, 28th, 29th of... Um of July out there. Let's not worry about the uh, date. So we have those two things going for us. By the way, the ES Mini right now is trading right at its daily horizontal trading range that has had 38 closes, opens or closes, at the 2852 level. We're at 2850 right now. So this is a real strong level of support. If this isn't it, it's the monthly horizontal trading range at 2836. So we're right up against some uh, support levels out there. I don't know if they're going to hold just yet. We've got to go take a look at some intraday charts to try to get some signals but we are at support and then we've got two charts out here that are showing those potential bottom signals so then john i simply step over and i take a look at well, what's going on inside the spot volatility index well we can see that it's up by 26.54 that's the very right hand side of this chart out here it shows the spot volatility index at 22.17 what you and i know is that when you have one day rates of change greater than 10 percent that's what we have at the moment. Uh, what we typically see is a stall or a bounce or a bottom that forms inside of the S&P 500 out here. So what I wouldn't want people to do is to jump on the short train right now with all of these things in place out here. I'd rather them sell the perigee or there's going to be a new apogee pivot point um, in the next, I think, over this the weekend. This weekend, sir, this yeah. weekend. Yeah, this weekend. <laughs> so we'll we'll have something else to you know use to guide us uh, with out here. But there's also that play that is in place right now. And then we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. One of the ways that it forms its bottom. So we've got, and this is a different tool than the one that we just looked at where prices will be lower with less relative energy. But here what we can see on a closing basis, and in order for this to happen, the New York Stock Exchange would need to close below 12,497.31, we'll call it out there. And that says we've got a lower low right now than the uh, date of August the uh, 5th out here. But if we go back and we take a look at the August 5th low of its advanced decline oscillator, it was a much lower low, 223.09. Right now you're at minus 161. If you take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, when it has formed other very viable bottom patterns, just the last four, those would be the red diagonals on my chart out here uh, at the uh, middle section. Uh, you can see that those were really viable 
buyable bottom type patterns and signals out there. Now, just because this pattern is present, we need something else to indicate to you and I that the so-called bottom is in. But your specific question, is there anything that I'm looking at that in essence would warrant caution that the markets may not fall all the way to the downside? And then, John, we kind of combine that stuff with Tom and uh, and uh, David's work and taking a look at the volume analytics out here and understanding that the market is moving lower at this stage with, with lighter volume. So those would be the things that I'm looking at. And then one other piece of information I'll throw out here for you, and this way kind of helps Peter with his question of taking a look at uh, of, uh, several different things to understand what the market is doing, Peter inside our target den out here, is that I showed the larger consolidation when we opened up the show. There is a smaller consolidation, in essence, that seems to be going on, utilizing Tom DeMarc's uh, set-up trend lines out here, the breakout levels. We can see on the two-hour time frame charts that there's a key level of support in the ES Mini, 28.31.50. So I will say this. If everything I looked at is dead wrong, price must close the ES Mini below 28.31.50. But right now, it's in bar number nine of that TD setup, and Markets can bottom, in this case here, on bars eight, well, that's out of the question, but bars nine to the bar following nine. And if we get that before this 28.31.50 level out there, that says caution to the downside. And right now we can see the NQ well away from its breakout area, John, is 73.93, and the Dow testing its level of 25.527. So that's what I threw out there for you. If you want to digest that during this break and come back to me with some questions, you're welcome to do that as well. Thanks so much. One follow-up, I will hold. Okay, perfect. We'll be back with John from Philadelphia as soon as we get back from this break. That was off 663. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even
be giving you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. Uh, we're on the line with John in Philadelphia. We're taking a look at the the S and P general markets for the most part. And so, John, the follow up question that you had is: Yes, sir. Uh, dovetailing right with the last chart you uh, you showed, which was the TD uh, setup nine count for the two hour chart patterns on. Yes. I think all the uh, index futures you track. Yes. Uh, Steve, as you know, it was oh, 33, 34 years ago that a pal of Tommy DeMarc, a fellow by the name of Joey Generalis, Joey, uh, Joey taught me uh, Tommy DeMarc's sequential system tool. Yes, yes. That was reasonably newly invented uh, 33 years ago. And I have used that uh, as applied to daily, weekly, monthly charts ever since in looking for uh, intermediate to long-term uh, trend changes. Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, just so your listeners know, it might be of interest to them. The S&P daily chart, the S&P cash, yes. S&P 500, daily chart and weekly charts both gave confirmed to mark sequential system cell signals here in the past six, seven weeks. Yes. Uh, suggesting trend change at hand, which is what I think we're dealing with. Uh, but leaving that aside, um, have you, uh, well, I notice with great irregularity during your shows, you will display either 30-minute or hourly bar charts and the uh, Tommy DeMarc, the TD uh, setup counts. Yes. My question, uh, you've aptly noted after nine-count patterns, TD setup nine-count patterns, uh, slight reversals often occur. What, you've nev what I've never seen you comment upon, the... Uh, DeMarc system as applied to half hour and hourly charts. Have you noticed any tendencies for the combo signal or what Tommy also referred to as the sequential, uh, the sequential signals? Have you ever or have you developed any feel or ex not feel but experience as to whether sequential signals on those very shorter term charts are accurate and tradable. Yeah, so uh, it's been a while since I've applied those to the shorter term time frame charts out there. Uh, but what I will do is uh, uh, between today and tomorrow's show, um, I'll generate some shorter term time frame charts and I'll put that tool on there and then we can look at that. Uh, not that you have to call back in or anything, but I'll but I'll do that on the shorter term time frame charts and you and I can look at it. You had mentioned the TD combo count, folks. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, those are referring to the red numbers on the system out there. John or I are going to explain the entire strategy for you, but you can buy books on this and, and read upon it. But as John mentioned, the S&P 500 generates the count signals out there and then it required a close below uh, a certain bar out there which which the S&P 500 did so that's that's truly in place out here and um, and then yesterday's bounce up was right into resistance Stevie's red line so I'll answer your question tomorrow with actual definitive charts that we can take a look at the nine count happens more often and so I like to use that and I especially like to use that because it helps me to and I think it helps others to identify Identify and answer the question is this just a retracement what's the difference between a retracement and an actual change in trend 
And so where that setup helps us is to identify where price broke out versus going all the way back to what normal folks would use, which would be a prior swing point out there. And, and this is where it's really helped me substantially. And I think the traders and investors in the listing, listing environment as well, because this two hour time frame chart is so helpful to us right now with regard to understanding the Dow equity futures contract uh, and the ES mini. Um, and its counts and coming back to a level where price broke out. Likewise, price ran right into resistance yesterday inside the ES Mini. And those are the green horizontal lines in the upper panel out here. And so it's working well. You keep working with the time frame until it stops working out there. So I, so let's let's take a look at what you would have asked about tomorrow. Or I'll, I'll let me ask you this. I look forward to that, Steve. Thanks so much yeah, for your help. Me, I do appreciate it. Okay, you bet. Thanks for calling. That was John in Philadelphia. And tomorrow we'll look at those TD sequential, both uh, both the TD sequential and combo counts on the short-term time frames to the upside and to the uh, downside out here. So, look, let's get to some questions that have uh, come in as well. Uh, make sure that we get to these. The first one coming in from uh, Ray C. And uh, Ray in Saratoga, New York, wants to take a look at the uh, GDXJ specifically. And uh, what he specifically is asking for is is uh, the uh, TAS profile levels out here. So if we take a look at um, uh, GDXJ, right now the level that you're watching for in the daily time frame chart is 39.94. Yesterday was a test of that uh, level out there, Ray, or Raymond, and uh, um, and as long as that holds, you don't have a change in trend. You just have price pulling back to support. The weekly profiles are well below where price is at, 32.48. That's not going to help you. And the weekly level of support, because I believe that's what you were asking for, the monthly, I'm sorry, the, so the weekly is well below price. The monthly is well below price as well. That's at 30.92 out there. With regard to, so, so those are your levels for the GDXJ. Um, you say they seem to be going down faster than the price of gold. Well, that's all going to be dependent upon the constituents that are in there. I don't know what those are, but they're easy to look for. But right now, what I would say about the uh, junior gold miners ETF is uh, there's not a level of support that has been broken. So thanks for writing in. I hope that answers your question. If you've got further questions, just uh, please go ahead and uh, and fire away. And, and look, folks, with regard to to gold and to gold, gold and silver, the mining equities or what have you, I just don't. If you're if you're in from from a lower base, I, that's great. I don't want you to be sucked into this vortex out here. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is if we take a look at uh, gold and we take a look at silver out here, well, first, let's take a look at silver. Here's what silver hasn't done at this stage. Well, first, silver's trading right in the top of a daily profile level, $17.26. We're at $17.22. So that's resistance out there. We also have a new quarterly profile that formed, and the top of that box is $18.40. So there's no breakout going on inside of silver. Yes, there was a nice move out here, but there's no breakout, not like what we would see with regard to gold out here. Okay, because if I put up the, uh, the gold contract, now the numbers are going to be slightly different perhaps and where price is actually trading because this is my synthetic version of the contract. But I have to do this in order to get quarterly profiles and monthly profiles and so forth. But here you can see price is above all of the resistance zones, the top of the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly level out there. So we can certainly look at gold and say, hey, look, it's the breakout is valid. But is it real? Why would Stevie say I don't want you to get sucked up into that cortex out here? You've got to ask yourself the question, You've got to ask yourself the question, is there a real breakout out here without silver breaking out? If you go back to the real breakouts in gold back in 2010 out here, it really occurred when silver broke out as well. And if you take a look at silver right now, it has not broken out above its July 2016 high at 2037. In fact, it's made a bit underneath it. Do not get sucked into this vortex. There's going to be a future. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. 
A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got a couple more questions that have come in. Let's get to those uh, here during this segment. And uh, so this one coming in from Pradeep. Pradeep says, I've, I have a long position in EGO. That's El Dorado Gold. But let's go ahead and get the charts up here for everyone, EGO. And uh, at a cost of about... Uh, 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 okay, I I'm not going to reveal your cost uh, that you've been holding for more than a couple years. I'm wondering if I should close out the position. Well, here's what we know about El Dorado Gold right now. If you're asking me, would you close out the position today? I'd have to say, well, I don't have a, well, at least at this stage here and looking at these charts, I don't have reasons to suggest that. Uh, you've got El Dorado Gold trading above its daily profile. That's 850 or at 876. It's well above its weekly, which is only at 486. And it's above its quarterly profile out there as well, 743. So since you've been in this for a while, um, and I understand you're really trying to recover some of your capital out here. Um, I don't see I don't see that in taking a look at these charts out there. I don't see a failure of support out here, and you'd really want to see that. So failure of support inside El Dorado Gold on as of uh, today's date, which is August the 14th, you'd need to see a close below 751. See how the bottom of these profiles out here, per deep, have held as support. So you at least need to see some type of change in trend signal. We don't see that here. If I look at the daily time frame, my other set of charts to look for some type of um, uh, reversal pattern. There is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, and you did get the bearish engulfing candle yesterday, but that bearish engulfing candle um, didn't have any follow through today. So it's kind of lackluster, and you like to see follow through on any type of up move or down move out here. It's certainly a bust of support, 751. So we've got to still stick with the, you know, you need to see a break of support before you. You know, before you would before you would take that type of action, the weekly time frame chart. I don't have a bottom signal 
well, let's take a look at wave counts from the low out here. Only in wave number four, most likely. Uh, the other potential wave count would be two. So that's not generating anything for you on a, a weekly basis. So I don't have a signal out here, Pradeep, uh, to suggest that you would uh, go ahead and, um, you know, and, and do just that. But but that's what I see. You've got to do what is certainly right for you. So I uh, hope that information uh, helps out. Let's go to uh, James. James writes in and says, hey, Steve, appreciate your show. Well, I appreciate your listening and answering our questions. That, that's what I'm here for. Do you think tomorrow will be another bad day in the markets? OK, I have some cash. I'd like to buy the S&P ETF and maybe Walmart and so forth. So um, do I think tomorrow will be another bad day in the market? What I really need to know, James, is what does the four o'clock close look like? And and at 145, I don't know what that is. But you can just kind of go through the checklist, in essence, of things that we, we looked at earlier. Does the spot volatility index finish higher by more than plus 10%? Believe it or not, if the market backs off and we don't see some other type of bullish reversal out here, um, and you've got less than 10%, well, then the market could continue to move lower tomorrow. I mean, it's just off the top of my head without looking at something else. But a it increases the odds of a bounce tomorrow out here. And I don't know if I'd want you to necessarily put cash to work. You didn't say for what time period, but when you start talking about buying the S&P and the Walmart and so forth, I'm thinking you're not talking about like a day trade or intraday trade or something like that. And therefore, I think you've got to you've got to wait for a while. If you're looking to put that longer term, those longer term funds together, remember, it's always the middle of October. Uh, that is the ideal time frame. So I would just continue to build up your cash if it's more intermediate term uh, type of uh, uh, time frame out there. At least that's our call right now on uh, Wednesday, August the 14th at 1.46 in the afternoon. But right now, this is suggesting, this being the spot volatility index, that we could see a bounce. We took a look at those volumes, take a look at the IWM, so far rejecting the uh, swing point that was established on August 5th that had volume of 39 million. You're at 17 million. So it's a test on light volume. Price is also traded back into the swing point on May 31st with light volume. Now, that volume might be the same or similar, but if price rejects that level, meaning at the end of the day, close above 146.84. The weak link out here, or one of the weak links, will have said, I'm not ready to go down anymore. You know, if you can't bust them down, or you're going to go bust them up. you got to know where the bust them up is, too, though. Um, so that, you've got the SPY that we had talked about. If we just kind of update the volume out here in the queues, volume in the SPY, 69 million versus substantially more than I think it was 176. And if you take a look at the QQQ series ETF, we don't do this often, but right now, price is rejecting the August 5th swing point. That's at 183.51. You're at 183.62. And that's substantially lighter volume or 30 million versus 75. So those are all suggesting and answering James' question. You know, do I think tomorrow will be a bad day? At this stage here, that's not what the indication is. Um, so, I, I, you know, but if I really need to see what the readings are at 4 p.m. versus what we're looking at at 2 p.m. And then, of course, you heard the conversation that John and Philly and I had, and we were talking about this 120-minute time frame chart. Now, look, if we break below these, not break, but close below these levels out here, 28.31.50 in the ES Mini, 79, I'm sorry, 73.93.75 in the NQ, and 25.527 in the Dow. Well, then that says a, a real key level of support has been broken. And then Stevie's got to go take a look at other areas out here and other things that are going on inside the uh, marketplace. So uh, we're, we're in a real traders marketplace. The last uh, several days have been a well for the last two weeks. Eight, to, yeah, have been been real proof of, of that out there. So, so th that's my answer. That's my answer to your question. And then we've also got prices here, like in the ES Mini, as we talked about, price coming down to levels of support, the daily horizontal trading range. Those are the blue numbers. 38 closes around 28.53. We're 28.58 right now. Key level of support. And just below that is the 28.36 area. You close below 28.36, you know, that opens up the uh, Kimona down to the 27.71 level out there. So uh, I hope that answers my question for you. Um, and I just summarize like this. At this stage, at 149, everything that we're looking at is indicating that the market is going to not have a bad day tomorrow.
But let's just, uh, I, I, if you, subscribers will know this evening when I do my end of day reports exactly what's taking place as of four o'clock and what the message of the markets is at that stage. So thanks for writing in as always. Okay, no other questions. So um, let's see what we didn't really go through that we should take a look out here. And I don't know that it's much because it was, I really wanted to get that uh, gold and silver. Now, someone had said, Bruce said in the Tiger's Den as we were going into the end of that uh, session here when I was showing this chart that my Skype was breaking out because we're it's raining cats and dogs out my window out here right now in Delray Beach. Uh, we're getting a bunch of rain out there. Um, in any event, uh, okay, I, I was going to go someplace else. I, I'll just go there anyways, which is which is great for the pool. It just means I don't have to fill it up as much. You know, I but the take a look at my backyard well if you were to look at my backyard you'll see that i'm the where my backyard ends is three feet from the intercoastal and um and i still have to fill up my pool and there's no leak or anything i've had leak detectors out here for the last uh, uh, but and it's like about every three days out there you know they talk about you know the the ice is melting and and, and, and eventually i'm gonna the house is gonna be underwater out here why does anybody ever talk about evaporation? I'm sitting right here at 500 yards in front of me is the ocean. Um, there's evaporation that goes on all over the place out here. Anyways, shoot, back to the silver chart. Silver is telling us to be careful and not get sucked into the gold vortex out here. The real breakouts occur when they're both breaking out and silver is not. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, quick check here, see if there's any other questions that have come in. Nothing that I see. So right now we've got the uh, Dow. Dow's off 610, S&P off 68, uh, NASDAQ off a couple hundred points. Let's just take a look at short-term time frame charts out here. Uh, let's take a look at the 30-minute time frame. You've got, a, I don't have a bottoming pattern or signal out here, but, you know, we took a look at those two-hour time frames. We know at 2 o'clock we're going to get bar number 9. That's going to form on that two-hour time frame chart, forming bar number 9 above support. The breakout level that is a uh, that's a bullish message. Now, that bullish message turns into it doesn't mean it doesn't mean well. Let's go with what it, it it can still be a lower low coming into four o'clock on the two hour time frame because the nine count can identify a bottom of bars eight, nine or the bar following nine. So two hour time frame, the bar we were looking at here, I'll just pull over the right time frame. Otherwise, I'm probably just screw everybody up here. Uh, so you can see that. And by the way, we don't have bar number nine counts in the NQ or the or the Dow out here. Um, so there can be a, a lower close coming into the 4 p.m. time frame on the two-hour chart for the uh, ES Mini and still generate that bottom signal. 2831.50 is going to be the key level. Now, let's say that it starts earlier. What's going to be a signal that it's starting earlier and that we're just not seeing a little bit of an oversold uh, relief here, you know, during the next hour or so? Well, you've got a new daily profile out here inside the ES Mini, and that says you would be watching the level of 2870. If price were to close above 2870, it opens up the Kimona for 2907, where price on a 30 minute basis uh, most recently broke down. So that's a level to be watching, 2870. I'm not saying the ES Mini is going to close above that. I don't have really a bottoming signal on a 30 minute time frame. For the NQ out here, what do we know? It too has a bullish structured new profile, 30 minute profile. And here, price would need to close above 7619. That'd be quite a rally out there. Just get it up to 7619, it would be nothing more than. Then a, a bit of a counter trend a rally working off some of this oversold stuff. So there you go, folks. It's been a great hour. I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Join me again tomorrow, 1 p.m. sharp. Well, really, I think it's about 106, 107, something like that. But stay tuned. Two hours or three hours of great programming. David White, your favorite polar bear. Tom O'Brien after that, and I'll be back with you tomorrow. Take care.